a variety show about all things Indian Exeter. We're going to be starting out, as is part of the course, with a musical showcase featuring some footage we recorded a while ago with local artist Bunny. So, let's head to the clip. My name's Devin, um, I'm from Stratham, that's where I grew up, and I'm going to play you a cover, this is a Kimya Dawson song, I really like Kimya Dawson, uh, it's called I Like Giants. When I go for drive, I like to pull off to the side of the road. Oh man, <laughs> this is like freaking me out, this, this video stress. stuff. This is a lot of stress. <laughs> I'm not used to this. So just go whenever now? Go whenever! <laughs> Alright, so this is my my take two. Um, yeah, you're you're tuned into EX TV right now. When I go for a drive, I like to pull off the side of the road, turn out the lights, get up and look up at the sky. And I do this to remind me that I'm really, really tiny in the grand scheme of things, and sometimes this terrifies me. But it's only really scary because it makes me feel serene in a way I never thought I'd be because I've never been so grounded and so humbled and so one with everything. I'm grounded, I am humbled, I am one with everything. And rock and roll is fun, but if you ever hear someone say you are huge, look at the moon, look at the stars, look at the sun, look at the desert and the ocean and the mountains and the sky. Say I am just a speck of dust inside a giant eye. The music that I write myself, I have online under the name Funny Love, which is a reference to some weird, obscure 90s movie. The movie is called, what was it, My Degeneration. It's this really low budget uh, movie by this director called John Morizugu. And it's about a like punk band of these three girls called Bunny Love. And then the American meat industry sponsors them. The beef industry, the American beef industry. And then they have to change their name to Fetish. So they went from Bunny Love to Fetish. And so I took their name. So I swim across salvation and I swim to save my soul. My soul is just a whisper trapped inside a tornado. So I flip to my back and I float and I sing. I'm grounded, I am humbled, I am one with everything. So when I saw my friend, I nearly cried when she said that the giant on the cliff wished that she was dead. And the lemmings on the cliff wished that they were dead. So the giant told the lemmings why they ought to live instead. And made her reconsider a sad thought in her head. We all become important when we realize our goal should be to figure out our role within the context of the world. And rock and roll is fun, but if you ever hear someone say you are too, you got to look at the stars, you got the sun, the desert and the ocean and the mountains and the sky. Just a speck of dust inside a giant eye. This is a um, Martin backpack of guitar. Um, so it's a regular guitar. People always ask me, what is that thing? It's a guitar, it has six strings. It's just a mini guitar. Uh, so you can travel around with it and stuff. 
Um, I've had it for like two or three years. Looks like I've had it for like a hundred years. I like using it because it's small and uh, it's got nylon strings, which is easier on your fingers than like steel string. So I like that. I've got harmonica. Uh, I only really use harmonica when I'm playing out in the street. I don't even really like harmonica that much, but it's like good for like playing on the street because it like sucks people in and they get they're like, oh, what is that? And then I have this little tambourine in my foot, um, just to try to you know get more people interested when I'm playing out in the street. Can you tap it? Yeah, there we go. Yes. <laughs> Some guy yesterday in Portsmouth, I was playing. He was like, can I give you some advice? But all I can hear is that tambourine. It's like, I think you have hearing problems. I don't know what's up with this guy. He thought he was like a music like critic or something. And it was really weird. I have this other busking act that I do where it's called Pizza Day and I take Green Day songs and change the words that are about pizza. And it's just like totally stupid stuff, but it's funny. And I have like a pizza thing that I wear and I went and did that last night for like a half hour and made like 30 bucks. So like regular music played for a few hours and made like 30 bucks. Pizza music played for like a half hour and made like the same amount of money. So people like comedy. I've been playing it's stuff like, on the street for a few years on and off. The first time I did it, I was on this trip with my friend and we were uh, hitchhiking around out west and that's when I first did it. I think I first ever played on the street on my 21st birthday outside some like baseball stadium in Phoenix, Arizona. No one was giving us money, it was like really bad. We, I think I, we probably stopped. And also everyone just wanted to see their sports. Yeah. But then someone gave us like free baseball tickets. And it was like really weird because I don't really like sports at all. But we were like, all right, we'll go. I played like up here in New England till 
way after that. And then I didn't really get very serious about it till like last summer. Uh, like right now, during the summer, I don't even have a job. I'm just playing music and like doing other random stuff. Um, and I actually like make enough money from it. <laughs> it's pretty cool. Sometimes it's good, sometimes it's bad. It's not like steady, but as long as you like have some kind of like gimmick and like go out a lot, then you can like make enough money. on Saturday, June 24th, Swayze Parkway, 3 p.m. Get your tickets. There are some awesome prizes. First prize, $300 cash. Second prize, a birthday party at Karate International. And third prize, $100 Hannaford gift card. So if you see Lucky around town, have a photo, say hi, purchase your tickets, and we'll see you on Saturday, June 24th. Mm-hmm. 
Good evening. Uh, my name is Dan Chartrand. I'm the owner of Water Street Bookstore. The mission of Water Street Bookstore is to build community around the written word, and I'd say we're on mission tonight. So. Yeah, I thought any town that can sustain an independent bookstore and love an independent bookstore, that was the kind of town I want to live in. What were the messages she has been getting? So Dolores is really the voice of our post-colonial scars on the island. And here in this monologue, you'll see some of it coming out. And I really just can't think of a better way for us all to come together and to really celebrate the freedom to read and to um, freely exchange ideas. Hello, we're here at Water Street Bookstore. The next clip will be for our literary corner or poetry corner. This time we're doing more of a, a book thing than a poetry thing. Uh, and that will be a reading from the opening night uh, here at Water Street Bookstore of Feel XYZ by Lisa Bunker. It's about an alien and a lot of other things. And we'll have uh, Lisa explain the rest and do the reading from it. See you guys. And I, I like to preface this chapter with a story about the writing process. Um, I finally got my lucky break, thanks to Dawn, um, and got this the manuscript version of this in front of the eyes of Bree, the agent at Writer's House. And she said she liked it, but she had some changes to suggest before, um, before she started submitting it to publishers. And I confess I bristled just a little. Um, I knew in my heart of hearts that my book was already perfect and did not need changes or amendments. Um, but she, you know, they, she was going to help me get my book finally published after all these decades of trying. And so I reluctantly agreed to try out some of her changes. And one of the changes that she wanted was she said, I'd just like another chapter or two about Felix and his, his life outside of, this, of school, his fandoms, his friends, his, his love interest is a boy named Hector that he has a crush on. And I said, all right, fine. And I wrote this chapter, and it's now my favorite chapter <laughs> in the whole book. So um, if anybody else here is a writer and you bristle at suggestions from others, um, let that be an object lesson to you that editorial is essential and you need to get other eyes to look at your book. And then you need to listen even though you know they're wrong. And, and just try what they're suggesting. So, in this chapter, much closer to the end of the book, but a kind of interlude in the sort of the building tension about the procedure coming, um, Felix is on his way to a comics convention with Grandy and with his sister B. And there's been an idea that Hector will be there, but they have not arranged to meet together. Eleven days to go. It's so odd. In eleven days I might be dead, but I was still excited to wake up this morning on account of Manacon. I've been looking forward to it for weeks, even before Hector told me about Ash and about maybe being there my, himself, so I woke up without Mom calling me. Ash is Ash Cortez, who is the creator of, of um, Novaglyph, which is Felix's absolute favorite webcomic in the universe. Um, it was interesting giving Felix a cyber life because I couldn't refer to anything real. Um, the internet changes so fast that by the time publication happened, whatever I referred to would be gone. Also, there might have been rights issues. There's, there's a throwaway reference to Minecraft in here, but other than that, all of the internet is totally made up. So, Novaglyph drawn by Ash Cortez, a webcomic. Then I lay there for a little while in this clean, dim, gray light that I usually don't wake up early enough to see. The countdown part of my brain just wanted to hide behind my chair and whimper, but another part of my brain was still like, yay, the main account. and the yay part came out on top, so I decided to get out. Of course, even as we pull up to the convention center, I'm already scanning for Hector. It's tricky, because I don't know if he cosplays and if he does as what character, 
so I can't just scan for his hair and color and Hector shape. I have to look hard at everyone. I don't see him anywhere. Once we're inside, I also immediately start scanning for Ash's table. I don't see it at first, and I start to wonder if Hector got it wrong, but then I catch sight of the Novoglyph symbol on a banner, and there she is. Um, I need to mention something else before I go on. Um, there's going to be a reference in a little bit to Jark, J-A-R-Q. That is <coughs> Hector, that is Felix's own webcomic of the world that he has designed. Ash turns out to be a person of medium height, with black hair buzzed short on one side, a nose ring, and tats on her hands and neck. She's wearing layers of mostly black clothes and an unusual hat, and she has a loose, floppy way of sitting in her chair, like she's actually a rag doll instead of a human. She doesn't have much on her table, a stack of comics and some stickers and stuff, and she's flopped there watching the people walk past. By this time, B has gone off on her own, so it's just me and Grandy. My heart starts to beat faster, and I step closer to Grandy, who is in burn mode at being Saturday, with boots and jeans and a big belt buckle. Who knows my fandoms and says, there she is. How about it, Felix? Shall we approach? <coughs> um, I'm feeling shy. Yes, but you can still go talk to her. I wish I had brought my sketchbook. No, I'm glad I didn't. Come on, Randy says, and Bill puts a hand on my shoulder and steers me forward. When we get trapped to, to the table, Ash looks up and says, Hey. Her voice is gentle and soft, and her face looks sad, but her eyes are calm. All I can do is nod. What's your name? Felix. Hey, Felix, she says and smiles, and her smile is sweet and also sad. We look at each other for a second, and then her head drops a little, and her eyes go away, and I think, hmm, maybe she's shy too, and that makes it possible for me to say, I love your, thanks, she says. Want a sticker or something? Yeah, thanks. You draw, Felix? I look at her face again, and this time her eyes stay on mine. She does the sad smile again, and this little shrug with one shoulder, like, yeah, we're just talking. So I start twitching and stuttering and trying to say something about Jark. And she's nodding and listening. And because I know it's safe, I say, if I had brought my sketchbook, I could show you. And Grandy's hand comes over my shoulder, holding their phone with one of my drawings on the screen. And I make a noise that is supposed to mean, no, stop. But it's too late, and the phone is in Ash's hand, and she's swiping, swiping, nodding. And I look up at Grandy with my eyes burning like laser beams, but Bo looks right back. So I add a snarl face, but Bo points her eyes at Ash. And when I look back at her, she says, these are good. I like how you use perspective, and your shading is excellent. Wow. Wow. I feel like I have fireworks going off in my body, because, but I'm back to not being able to speak. Then she turns her head sideways and scrunches up her eyebrows and asks in a hesitating way, how do you feel about your proportions? What? She can see that? Of course she can. She's Ash Cortez, but I've already stepped the last step to the table. She turns the phone so that we can look at the screen together, and all of a sudden, I can talk. I tell her about how hard it is to get the shoulders and arms and hips and legs to work right. Something's always too long or short or big or small or just shaped wrong somehow. And she tells me how she spends all this time drawing her characters doing odd things that they won't ever do in the comic, standing on their heads, doing somersaults, scratching their butts, and my brain goes, boing because it's such a good idea. And, well, anyway, we have this amazing conversation, and the fireworks just keep going off, and all of a sudden I feel like I'm about to cry, so I do this sudden awkward goodbye, and we walk away, and my face is burning, but she gives me one last smile and says, nice to meet you, Felix. Keep on keeping on. And, well, it was incredible, the whole thing. Nelson, I just had to go into the bathroom again. That's where he goes to cry. Never mind not having enough time to draw everything I want to draw. I don't even have time to draw anything I want to draw. Gah! A thousand times, gah! And I never saw Hector, but Granny went back to Ash's table and got me a comic. And it's so cool to see the art on paper instead of only on a screen. I would say maybe I could see my art on paper someday too, except my life is probably already over. How can things be so amazing and so horrible at the same time? This living stuff, it hurts worse than dying. I'd rather be dead. No, that's not true. <coughs> Ah! Yeah, you know what? I'm done for today. The words just don't work anymore right now.
Next up is our local color block. We'll be starting with an Exeter History Minute on Dick the Fire Horse, and then going into a, an art demonstration from the opening of Art Up Front Street. Uh, this is Ben Hillary. Uh, you're watching the Exeter Odyssey Shows on Exeter TV 98, so keep watching. I'm Barbara Rimkunis, curator of the Exeter Historical Society, and this is your Exeter History Minute. The most popular horse ever in the town of Exeter was an enormous fire horse named Dick. When the town upgraded its fire equipment in 1873 with the purchase of the three and a half ton Eagle steamer engine, the fire department was faced with the need for horses. Up until that time, fire apparatus was dragged to the scene by the firefighters themselves. They thought they were faster than the horses because they didn't need to waste time with harnesses. But a coal-fired steamer engine was too heavy for the firefighters to pull. A pair of matched gray Percheron fire horses named Dick and Prince were purchased for the town. Like most fire horses and most firefighters, they loved the adrenaline rush of a fire scene. And the firemen fell in love with these horses, particularly Dick. He's the one in the foreground who moved just as the picture was being taken. Dick was friendly and a bit too clever for his own good. He could untie his halter and at night would wander around the firehouse, sometimes turning on the, ga the gas lights or getting a drink of water by turning the sink faucets on. But he wasn't very good about turning them off. He flooded the station a few too many times before the annoyed firemen finally boxed in the faucet. When they weren't responding to fires, Dick and Prince were stuck doing highway department jobs, like hauling the sprinkler truck in the summer. Dick was a well-known mooch and would beg for bits of apple or banana by gently headbutting the shoppers on the street. The firemen were so fond of this horse that they included him in their meetings, often sitting on his broad back while they conducted business. When Dick died young in 1900 at the age of 18, the local newspaper, the Exeter Newsletter, published an obituary for him on the front page, and it was longer than the one written 27 years later for the fire chief, George Carter. For more information on the history of the Exeter Fire Department, visit us at exeterhistory.org or check out the Exeter Fire Museum on Facebook or at their building at 30 Court Street. Hi, my name is Don Amy and I do laser cutting and engraving and I'm going to walk you through how to cut out a sun with my laser cutter. For nearly 400 years, a dam stood at the Great Falls in downtown Exeter. But in the summer of 2016, the dam was removed. After a long and lengthy process involving local, state, and federal agencies, the Exeter River was free-flowing again. And although the historic dam may be gone, an event just as old as the river itself is about to get underway for the first time in 400 years.
You're watching Exeter TV 98. It's the Exeter Oddity Showcase, and next up is our animated segment. Uh, this is a um, an interesting uh, historical thing that was a very big novelty at the time, which was the late 30s. Um, it's the bouncing ball lyrics for songs. It's called I Don't Want to Make History. It has this real life band and the ball bounces along the screen. But what's important about this is that it's a Dave Fleischer film. So there is animation. It starts with a fake newsreel, which I think you're gonna find is just as relevant today as it was then. So let's go to the picture show. The great philosophers of the world, including the Acropolis, felt they needed some heavy light on the subject to end all wars. So after they met Switz to find out which is which, well, here it is. And now there's peace, or pieces. citizens will go cuckoo over this alarm clock invented by Professor Wiffelpiffel, a great dreamer and science diff. Through the window, gradually the sun sneaks up on the ice and the melting of the ice makes for to squirt the seltzer on the plant and nature takes its course because it makes for the revolver to shoot the flat iron down, up goes the lever and down comes the cannonball to wake up the professor in the nick of time. Minutes are precious. He has no time to lose. It is a matter of vital importance. Ah, because he's an undercover man.
took a chance, but I would take a chance as long as there's a moon up above. But I don't want to make history, I just want to make love. Napoleon took a chance, but when I think of France, it's Josephine that I'm thinking of. Cause I don't want to make history, I just want to make love. We all can't be heroes, we all can't be great. Right now I'll settle for a love affair and the dickens with affairs of state. I hear the call to arms, but sentimental arms, my banner is a moon up above. Or I don't want to make history, I just want to make love. Hello everybody, join in and sing the chorus if you wish. do have their place in the zoo, in your nightmares, in the deep, in your favorite horror movies, but not in your living room, on your TV. Don't let pay TV be the monster in your living room. Pay TV and cable TV companies are seeking the right to charge you for the very programs you now get free. If you want to stop pay TV and save free television, sign the petition in the lobby of this theater. Let your lawmakers know how you feel in the fight against pay TV and cable TV.
Here we are again at the end of another lovely Exeter Oddity Showcase. Uh, this will be my personal last, but we're gonna get someone else on it and we're gonna keep the show going. Um, so remember to submit your pieces to extbg at exeternh.gov with the subject line submissions for the showcase. I'm gonna play us out with a, a little song I like. It's called Everything Stays by Rebecca Sugar and I'll see you guys around. Thank you for watching the show. Still change.